Hey everyone, today, huge step forward towards my goal. Uh, still got a long distance to get to 350 wheel horsepower on an AR, but we gained about 30 wheel horsepower. <laughs> and the secret was uh, this intake. So this is the factory intake, and this is just, this is just a work of art. Um, it flows super nicely, and it's got, you know, uh, low speed runners and high speed runners but at the end of the day if you have the same displacement the same compression ratio in order to make more power you just have to push your rpms up yes you can gain a couple percent with volumetric efficiency here and there but when we looked at the charts from the three motor that we've made 240 in the past we were already over 100 percent volumetric efficiency so there's limited gains there so with that i figured it was time to start exploring what the next bottleneck could be um, and I just picked which one would be the most cost effective to try next and that ended up being the intake and you can see some pictures of it here I can't show it to you in person right now because it's still in the car um, but this thing was designed mostly with manufacturability in mind uh, in order to keep the price down and everything figured it would give me a dyno chart that would then give me a hint and inform the next decision I'm not saying you can't make probably a couple more horsepower with some design revisions and whatnot, but 30 wheel horsepower, we can't, we can't ignore that. Um, so despite the fact that it's out of phase for my production cycle to be making that part, I figured I'd, I'd give it a shot. Um, this is the first time in a really long time that I'm gonna do a pre-sale on items. Uh, there is a link kind of you know, somewhere around here uh, or in the description you can go and you can pre-buy. That's gonna help me get the money for the tooling and to actually go to production. Now, thankfully, none of the things we have to do here, it, I'm not using new vendors, I'm not using new technologies, it's all an established chain and everything, so I feel pretty confident that it'll take me about 60 days to get the first sample and then about another 30 days to get the production run. So, shouldn't take too long. There's more details on the sale page. Anyways, most of you guys, are just here to see kind of why that happened. And I think, I, I genuinely think that when Toyota made this motor, they had something much bigger in mind. Because, for example, here's the hybrid version. This thing is rated at 158 horsepower. Well, the heads, there seems to be only one head casting for the 2AR. So even on the hybrid, you get these ports that are the equivalent cross-section area to one and five eighths. That's huge. The intake ports are even bigger. So Toyota used, um, uh, let's see, yeah. So there's this valve that sits in the intake and it can do this. And this creates more tumble flow, which allows the engine to idle at a lower RPM and all sorts of stuff that are important for a production car these days but don't matter for making power. But as a result of this, they had to put enough space in the port to clear this valve. That means the intake ports are three and a half square inches in cross-sectional area. Uh, if you do the math on that, that's like a two and a quarter inch tube or 57 millimeters, is that, if that's your unit of choice. The, that's enormous. <laughs> that's, if you go compare that to a whole bunch of other motors, that's enormous. And then again, that carries even on the hybrid, right, because it shares the head casting, you've got 36 millimeter intake valves, two of them, and 31 millimeter exhaust valves also, two of them. Compare that to a whole bunch of other motors in this class, and that's huge. And I'm not even talking just the, the hybrid class, even just these 2.5 liter, you know, because 2.5 is the size that's been a big thing lately. And some of that is because this thing has a 90 millimeter bore. As a result, the whole engine is a little bit bigger, and also they wanted to improve the rod ratio. It's really the only thing I can think of. So the deck is a little taller. This engine is overall a little bit bigger because of these things, but you've got a lot of airflow in, a lot of airflow out and the ports to support it. This thing is, it's just, it's just an absolute monster waiting to happen. I wish, I wish I could know what Toyota was thinking when they designed this thing. There had to be some homologation rule series somewhere that mattered. Because, right, 270 horsepower, and at this point, we're still on the factory crank. We're still on the factory conrods and the factory p 
pistons, factory valves, um, I have upgraded the valve springs, the retainers, and the cams, but that's a pretty simple change, right? You just pop a couple things off, you change those, and you're making something that goes from the 188 at the crank rating that Toyota gave it to something north of 300. Um, I've only tested it to the wheels on a chassis dyno, but it's gonna be over 300 based on normal losses and whatnot. And from here, there's a couple of different places we can go, or all of them at the same time. Essentially, you can see this 191 foot-pounds of torque on the graph. Uh, if I go look up at other two and a half liter versions of this, you can see we're right around that same torque value. Now, if I bring in the 2.7 liter, you can see that one is 206 foot-pounds of torque. And that's essentially how you build more torque on a motor is displacement, compression, and fuel type. So in EV, to get to 350 from here, we're gonna do all of those things. Oh, I forget also, volumetric efficiency is a huge factor in there, but as we discussed before, this motor, we're already around 100, a little over. So while there are gains to be had there, they're not very big. So if we take this current graph that we have, right, we can, we can improve that by going to 2.7. We can improve that by going to 12 to one compression ratio pistons keeping our big cams, and then for EV, um, going to methanol. Methanol, uh, technically actually less energy dense, but because of the amount that you have to squirt into there before it goes off, you end up with more energy in the piston, so in the cylinder. Um, so I think, I think from here, there's a really clear path for the drag racing engine, and that doesn't even include things like porting the head to increase the volumetric efficiency. And with that 90 millimeter bore, what we've got is the valves are actually splayed further apart. So where other motors in this class kind of can be upgraded to roughly that 36 millimeter valve, this starts there. Same thing with the exhaust and because they're more spread apart, you can expand them. So I've actually got a head right over here that has 38 and a half millimeter intake valves and 32, 32 millimeter exhaust valves. So there's a whole bunch more to do in the volumetric efficiency sense. I think there's a clear path from here to the 350. Not that it's not a lot of work, but clear path. And from here, because I know some people will be doubting that dyno graph, I'm gonna put together a single full segment. Uh, it does change camera, but I do make my best to make it so that you can follow the camera change. Uh, a single continuous shot of the car doing a pull and then showing it on the dyno. So here it is. Here's an overlay so you can read it a little bit better. And that's it. If you're just here for the show, thank you. And uh, if you're interested in the product, uh, there's links in the description. So have a great day. Bye.